In part one video, we saw some basic trigonometric equations. So we saw when there was one trig equation with an angle on its own, and then we saw when there was one trig equation and something was being done to the angle. So the angle was being multiplied like two theta or three X, or something could be added or subtracted to the angle. So now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at what happens when there's still one type of trig function, but it shows up two different types, two different times in the equation, or there are two types of trig functions. Like for example, in the equation, there's sine and cosine or tangent and cosecant. So let's begin with the type where there is the same trig function, but it shows up multiple times. So we can see that happening in both number one and number two. We have that in the first one, we have cosine, but it's being squared in one of the parts and then to the first power. And then the same thing is happening in number two, but it's sine. So we have here cosine squared and cosine of x. And so when you have a variable that shows up twice and one of them is the squared version of the other one, this is called quadratic in form. And a quadratic again is when the variable, one of them is the squared version. So normally a lot of times you see x squared and x, or you could also have x to the fourth and x squared. And so what we're going to do to make it look more like a quadratic that we're used to solving is we're going to use substitution. This is optional, but it helps again us to see it more in the form that we're used to. So we're going to let u, and you could let you could call, use any variable. You could use smiley face. The only one you don't want to use is x because x is already in the equation. So you have cosine of x, which means that when you square u, cosine is squared. And then I'm just going to replace it in the equation. So I'm going to have 2u squared minus u minus 1 is equal to 0. And then this might look like a quadratic that you're more used to. Now, anytime we have a quadratic, you have to set it equal to zero to be able to solve, and that's actually already done for us. So the next step is to factor. And you could use a quadratic formula, but sometimes you don't need to. So first you wanna check whether or not you can factor. So this is two u and u. Those are the only options for two u squared. And the only options for one is one and one. And then I need to make this a negative and this a positive, because then it will give me two u squared plus u minus 2u minus 1, which is equal to 2u squared minus u minus 1. Check. Always check your factoring. And then once I have an in factored form, I can set each factor to 0. So I have 2u plus 1 is equal to 0, which gives me that u is negative 1 half. And I have u minus 1 is equal to 0, which gives me that u is equal to 1. But remember, I wasn't solving for u. I use u as a substitution for cosine of x. So I need to resubstitute that back in. So I have the cosine of x is negative one half, and the cosine of x is one. And then we solve this just like we did in the previous video. So we think about the angles that make this true. So for cosine, that's quadrant two and three. So the ones that make uh, cosine negative one half is gonna be two pi over three and four pi over three. And the angle that makes cosine one happens at zero. But remember to always look at how you're solving. So we don't want the formula. We want specifically the answers from 0 to 4 pi. So currently, these are the answers from 0 to 2 pi. To go into the next revolution, I need to find the coterminal of them. So I need to add 2 pi to all of these. So 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi, which is 6 pi over 3, will give me 8 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3 will give me 10 pi over 3 and this will give me two pi. And so these are the angles from two pi to four pi. And now I have all my answers, and that is six angles. Oops, let me actually not include the two pi. Here are my six angles. If I make this equation true from zero to four pi. Let's try another one. So again, this is quadratic in form because it shows up twice, sine, and one of them is the squared version of the other one. So I'm gonna use the u substitution. This time I have to substitute it for sine, which means that u squared is sine squared x. And I'm gonna have two u squared minus five u minus three is equal to zero. 
I'm going to try to factor without the quadratic formula first. So this is 2u, this is u. And I'm going to put the 3 here so that it gives me a 6 and then a 1 here. And I want the 6 to be negative and the 1 to be positive so that it gives me a negative 5u. And at this stage, you would check it and you would see that it would work. So when I set each factor to 0, I'll get u is equal to negative 1 half and u is equal to 3. But again, remember, it wasn't u, it was sine, so I need to re-put back in sine. And then I'm solving only from 0 to 2 pi now. So just one revolution. So x is negative 1 half in quadrant 3 and 4. And the specific angles that make that true is 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And where is sine 3? Well, actually, sine, remember, can only output a ratio between negative 1 to 1. So this is impossible. There's absolutely no angles that make sine 3. So my only two solutions for my equation in the, the rev revolution 0 to 2 pi is 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now, I do want to make a note that using the u is not necessary. If you can actually factor directly from the original equation, the u is the substitution is just a trick to help it look more like something that you're used to, okay? All right, so let's move on to what happens when there are different trig functions inside the equation. So, so far we've seen it when it's just the same. And now we're going to look at it. So if you look at number one, the reason that we're, this looks different than what we have seen so far is because there's a sine and there's a cosine. So there's going to be two go-tos for this. And this is going to be go-to number one. Go-to number one is going to be to change it all to be the same one and then use the previous tools that we have in the equations that we've done so far. So the reason that this is possible in this type is because I can change cosine squared to be into sine squared. And the way that I do that is I use the Pythagorean identity. So I know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1, which means that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. And we use this a lot when we're doing identities. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace it with the cosine squared. So that's going to give me sine squared theta minus sine theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. And now I'm back to what we just did in the previous problems. I have sine, and sometimes it's being squared, and sometimes it's not. So it's quadratic in form. So I'm going to use the u. And that means that u squared is equal to sine squared theta. And I'm going to replace it all just to make it a little bit easier for me to solve the equation. Now, like we talked about in number one above, when you have a quadratic, you need to set it equal to zero. So in this one, it's not done. So I'm going to add the two, the u squared, which will give me two u squared. And I'm going to subtract the one and set it equal to zero. And from this stage, I will factor. And it's actually the exact same quadratic that was up here. Two u squared minus u minus one. So we have 2u plus 1, u minus 1. So this will give me u is equal to negative 1 half, u is equal to 1. But now it's sine theta. So we have sine theta is equal to negative 1 half, and sine theta is equal to 1. And we want a general formula for all the solutions. So sine is negative 1 half at 7 pi over 6. It's negative 1 half at 11 pi over 6. And it's 1 at pi over 2. But because we want the formula for all the solutions, we need to add all the coterminal angles to it. And of course, we cannot forget, because we're introducing the variable n to state what n is. And then here is our entire solution for our equation here. OK, let's do another one. So let's look at go to number 2 now. So go to number 2 will be to bring everything to one side and factor out the GCF. So just to make a note here, you can see that it's different because there's a sine and there's a tangent. And it's impossible for me to change tangent into sine because the only tangent equation identity that I have where tangent is not being squared is that it's sine over cosine. But then I would have a cosine 
and sine. So I'm not changing it all just into sine. So what I see is because there's a sine on the left and there's a sine on the right, I'm going to bring this over. So I have sine x tangent x minus sine x is equal to zero. And so that would be like if I would go on the side real quick, like say if I had y, z, oops, minus y is equal to zero, you could take out a y and this will give you z minus one is equal to zero. So that's the algebraic property that you're using. So I'm going to factor out a sine x. And in the first term, I'm left with a tangent x. And in the second term, I'm left with a minus one. And now, because I have it in factored form, I can set each factor equal to zero. So that's going to give me sine x is equal to zero. And then tangent x minus one is equal to zero, which gives me that tangent x is equal to one. And I look at the instructions, very important to see where I want to solve. And I want to give a general formula here. So I have x equals. Don't forget, anytime you're solving, you need to write the variable by itself and then equals. So here I'm solving for x, so it's x equals. Above here, it was theta, so it was theta equals. So sine x is 0 twice. It's 0 at actually 0. And it's 0 at pi. And tangent x is 1 twice, but remember that for tangent, you can write one simplified equation. So you take the first angle, then make tangents one, which is pi over four. So for sine, I need to add two pi n, but for tangent, because it's the special one, I can just add pi n and it will take care of all the general formula. And again, I need to state what n is. n is an integer. And here are all my infinite solutions. Okay, let's do another one. So here, we don't know which go-to we're going to use. So those are the only go-tos. Either use identities or bring everything to one side and factor out the GCF. So we definitely have two here. We have cosine and we have sine. And there's no way, there's no GCF here. So I can immediately see that it's going to be impossible to use go-to number two to take out the GCF. So I'm going to have to use go-to number one, which is to change them all to be the same. And I can do that because... I have a double angle formula for cosine. Remember that cosine has three double angle formulas and one of them has sine by itself, one minus two sine squared x. So I'm gonna replace it, one minus two sine squared x plus sine x is equal to zero. I'm gonna use, now this is a quadratic because sine shows up twice, but one of them is, being the, is the squared version of the other one. So then I have sine squared x. I have 1 minus 2u squared plus u is equal to 0. I don't like to factor when the squared is the negative, so I'm going to move everything to the left. So I'm going to have a positive 2u squared minus u minus 1. That's a personal preference. It's actually the same quadratic as I had in the previous problems. So it's just a coincidence. So I have 2u, u, 1, 1 minus plus. So it gives me that u is negative 1 half and u is 1. But again, I'm solving for sine. Oops, no more u. And then now I look back at my instructions always and I see I'm only solving from 0 to 2 pi. So for negative 1 half sine, that gives me 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. And for 1, that gives me pi over 2. And those are the only three angles in the first revolution. So here I use go to number one, which was to use the double angle formula for cosine and to change everything to sine. Okay, here we go. So I have two different trig functions. I have to use one of my go to's. Uh, cosecant is one over sine, so it's impossible for me to change it into cosine. So because I see one on the left and one on the right, I'm going to move everything over to the left. And now I can factor out the GCF. So I'm going to take out the cosecant of x because they both have it. In the first term, I'll be left with 2 cosine x. In the second term, I'll be left with the negative square root of 3 equal to 0. Now I can solve each of them equal to 0 individually. That's why factored form works with the polynomial. And this will give me that cosine x is a positive radical 3 over 2. I am looking for a general formula, so that's going to include the n. I'm going to do cosine because it's a little bit easier. So radical 3 over 2, it's positive, quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 for cosine. 
That will happen at pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And it will happen at 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And cosecant equal to 0. Okay, so this one might be a little bit tricky to think about. Now, remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So for cosecant to be 0, sine would have to be undefined. Because that means that it would be 1 over sine x is equal to cosecant of x. And so you would take the reciprocal of that, and so sine would have zero in the bottom of this. But sine is never undefined for that to happen. So if I took the reciprocal, that means that sine of x would be one over zero, which would be undefined. But this never happens. The domain of sine is all real numbers, so it's impossible for cosecant to be zero. This has no solutions. Another way to think about it is the range of cosecant. The range of cosecant is negative infinity to negative one, union one to infinity. Zero is not part of the range. So these are my only options. And I have to, of course, add that n is an integer because I'm introducing it to the solution. All right, we have one more. So I got two, I have cosine squared and I have sine negative x. So I'm going to have to use identities here twice. The first thing I'm going to do is, this looks a bit strange, but we have a really easy fix for that. Anytime the angle has the negative, I can use the even and odd properties. So sine is odd, so I can bring the negative in the front. And then I can change cosine squared x to be 1 minus sine squared x by the Pythagorean identity. So I have 2. Here, be careful to use your right, um, parentheses. And then I have 3. 1 plus, oops not plus, minus, because I'm putting the negative in the front. I'm going to distribute the 2. I'm going to distribute the 3. And I can see that it's quadratic in form. So I'm going to introduce my u to make it a little bit easier to factor. So I have 2 minus 2u squared is equal to 3 minus 3u. I'm going to have to set it equal to 0 when it's quadratic in form. I like the u squared to be positive, so I'm going to move everything to the right. So that's going to give me a positive 2u squared minus 3u. And then when I subtract the 2 from 3, it will give me a positive 1. So I'm going to try to factor this little guy. I have 2u, u, 1, 1. And the only way I'm going to have a positive at the end but a minus in the middle is if they're both negative. And then I would check my factoring, and I would make sure that it gives me what I started with. So when I set it equal to 0, it will give me u is 1 half and u is 1. I put back sine. Sine of x is 1 half. Sine of x is equal to 1. I am solving for 0 to 4 pi. So first I'm going to write this solutions from 0 to 2 pi. Sine is 1 half in quadrants 1 and quadrants 2. That happens at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And sine is 1 at pi over 2. And then to get in the next revolution, I need to add 2 pi to each of these. So pi over 6 plus 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6, will give me 13 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 will give me 17 pi over 6. And then pi over 2 plus 2 pi, which is 4 pi over 2, will give me 5 pi over 2. So the first three are in 0 to 2 pi, and then the uh, second three are 2 pi to 4 pi. And so all of them give me in two revolutions. So here are the angles that make this equation true. So remember that when you're solving an equation, what you just solved for is that if you plug in any of those angles into the original equation, it will make the left-hand side equal the right-hand side.